Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. This week's vlog is a little bit different. to my roots which is um, essentially a lot of food. That is the reason that I started my Instagram and I've been doing a little bit of it on my YouTube but not actually a huge amount and a lot of you guys have asked for recipes, uh, recipe ideas, easy meals, all that kind of stuff so I thought I'd put together some of my favourites. With me a lot of people ask for recipes and I'm like well to be honest I just see what's in my fridge, see what's in the reduce aisle and cook it because I don't tend to use recipes very much but I'll have like a base recipe for something like a stir fry um, bolognese, whatever else, burritos, that kind of thing. And then I'll just chuck in whatever I have. But there's no set recipe, so I'm just going to try and talk through it as I go along. I bought some stuff from Tesco yesterday and there was a lot of things in the reduced style so it might not be what I usually use but hopefully you guys will get the gist of like, for example, if there's spinach needed in a recipe, you can switch out for kale, you can do cabbage, you can do any other leafy greens and it will still work the same. So yeah, I'm gonna show you my shop from yesterday and then I think the first thing I'm gonna make is an apple pie. Super easy to make vegan because a lot of pastry is vegan anyway, puff pastry especially. And we have a lot of apples at my boyfriend's house down in Dorset so yeah I gotta use those guys up so yeah have a look at what I bought yesterday and then let's get cooking so in today's shop I got a bunch of stuff um, I wouldn't usually buy this much stuff all at once but because I'm recipe testing you guys get the privilege of seeing all those sorts of things. Um, there's a couple of things here that I wouldn't usually buy as well. For example, I often don't buy organic. Um, sometimes it's a bit of a waste of money, but any time that there is a yellow sticker on something, <laughs> I am drawn to it. But also, if you are concerned about plastic packaging and things, it's actually better to be buying things that are reduced in plastic packaging than it is to be buying things that are not reduced but without the plastic packaging. That's because all of this kind of stuff here, again, reduced, I don't really care about Tesco Finest, but it's all, all reduced. This would be chucked if no one bought it and therefore because the energy used to produce the food is a lot more than the energy used to produce the packaging um, it's actually better to get the stuff that would otherwise be thrown out same with these although they've not got plastic packaging or not got very much at least which is really good so that's why i've got all of this usually i just get normal button mushrooms or chestnut mushrooms um usually i wouldn't bother with pak choy cabbage works perfectly fine same with these fancy mushrooms um tofu ginger cinnamon obviously spring onions tomato puree because always loose peppers you can buy these loose really easily puff pastry it's vegan just naturally these because i'm greedy and i love them cheapest red kidney beans, chopped tomatoes, a cabbage, for some reason they didn't have cabbage not in plastic packaging, a small avocado, and that is it. And the rest of the stuff I tend to have as store cupboard staples. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna put the oven up to around 180 and put it on fan. If you've got it, if you don't have it, don't worry about it. And then we're gonna get started uh, chopping all of the apples. <laughs> Okay, so I have a lot of apples and I don't know how, how many I'm going to need for this but I'm going to try and use up as many as possible. I'll see how many I get through and then try and tell you at the end because um, otherwise it can get a little bit difficult. But like I said, I tend to just do these things willy nilly and then hope for the best at the end. But I've got the apples here and then I've got a big pan which is what I'm going to start cooking them in. And then I've got a little bowl for the discards. That if you have food compost should go in there but unfortunately where I live does not do food compost so it's either that or chucking them out the window. Now this is how big the apples are. You don't have to have apples this big, but cooking apples will do. Or if you've got only got those, then eating apples are absolutely fine as well. I don't bother removing the skins. You can if you like, but I think it's a bit of a waste of food and they taste good and they're good for you. Cutting into little chunks like this so that they can cook relatively quickly. So I did two apples worth, two very large apples worth for the filling. That goes underneath and then with the apple tart, what you've got is a nice pretty layer on the top of uh, fanned apples. So I'm gonna cook the filling and then uh, as that's cooking, I'm gonna start cutting up the thin slices of apples to go on the top of the tart. So to cook them, if you just add a tiny little bit of water at the bottom to stop them from burning and then stick them on the hob at a kind of medium heat. And then as it cooks, you can add some ginger, spice 
spices. Um, I use cinnamon, nutmeg, anything else that you like really. The more spices you add, the more like Christmas it tastes. I'm using fresh ginger for this just because I have it and it tastes really good. Oh my God, I'm like <laughs> crouching down here. Um, <laughs> yeah, just using fresh ginger, um, but you can use powdered ginger as well, or if you don't enjoy it, just cut it out entirely. So I've just peeled the end bit a little bit so that I can chop that off and it doesn't have all the rough skin in it. Um, and I peeled it with a spoon because that is the easiest way to do so. So as that cooks, I'm gonna start chopping up these massive apples into very thin slices to go around the top of the tart. There are lots of different ways of doing this. Mine's a little bit haphazard, so maybe don't copy mine. <laughs> just find your best way. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep chopping until it feels like it might be the right volume of apples. When you slice the apples, you want them to go really thin so that they can be layered on top of each other. So um, do it as thin as you possibly can and just work your way around the big chunk of apple to try and get all the little bits. If the apples look like they're cooking well, just turn down the heat a little bit and um, just add a lid. It stops the moisture evaporating, which means that they won't burn at the bottom, retains a little bit of it, and they should go a little bit squishy, kind of like apple compote, I guess. And I'll just put those on a low heat until I'm done uh, chopping up the rest of the apples. All of the apples are chopped and down there, um, and the apples that were on the hob are doing really well. They are um, sort of breaking down at the moment. Um, I'm gonna add a tiny bit of sugar to these, just to sweeten it up. You don't need to do this if you're not a fan of sugar, but you can add sugar, honey, maple syrup, basically anything you like, uh, just to sweeten it to taste. I'm not gonna put anything, anything sugary on the apples on the top, so it just makes it a little bit more like a dessert rather than apple sauce. So that is ready to go in the oven. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit of a haphazard way of getting them all in um, a row and neatly done, but just fit them all in if you can. Just FYI, I still have this many apples left over, so I will probably just put them on my breakfast or something like that. I knew that I needed to use up all the apples, so that was two apples for the base, for the center bit, and then um, probably two large or three small apples for the topping as well. Now we wait. I have no idea how long it's supposed to take. I'll probably check back in 15, 20 minutes and it should take probably 20 to 30, but again, I'll write it down there so that you guys know. Been half an hour and I'm just about to take the apple pie, tart, apple pudding, dessert out of the oven. Um, hopefully it'll be done by now. It's starting to smell really good. That. And that is done. You know it's done when it starts to go brown on the edges. That's a little bit burnt, but we don't worry about that. And that is our first dish done. That will be perfect for a dinner party, not that I'm hosting one. So I guess it'll just be perfect for me and my boyfriend whenever, really. <laughs> um, and of course, you can have it with soya cream, oat cream, mm, ice cream, anything else creamy and enjoy it. If you do give it a go, let me know what you think and uh, tag me on Instagram at Food Fitness Flora and I hope you do enjoy it. Okay, so it is lunch time and I'm about to cook some burritos and I have a random amount of ingredients, just stuff that I found around the house, but also things I bought yesterday that were reduced um, in the shops. So we have some seeded wraps from Lidl, good old Lidl, kale, 
tomatoes, peppers, a couple of spices, I had those already, an aubergine because I love it, chopped tomatoes and some kidney beans for all the goodness. I'm just gonna basically pan fry all of it um, with the spices, I might stick in some onion as well, um, and then if there's extra mix, I'll stick that in the fridge and then revamp it for the rest of the week, um, either on toast or as part of like, bolognese or even a stir fry. That's a great thing about leftovers, you can kind of do whatever with them. Um, so yeah, just gonna get cooking now. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to fry this onion, which I decided to add, and um, and some garlic as well. I'm gonna fry that in a pan here um, before adding the spices and a lot of other stuff. and garlic in there until they are going a little bit see-through and the garlic's browning a little bit. Then in the other pan, I'm going to fry this as well. Fried aubergine is my favorite thing in the entire world. Yeah, and uh, you, if you don't like it, don't put it in, but it is one of the best things if you like a little bit of flavor. So here we have the burrito mix, some avocado, some vegan cheese. To be honest, they all taste the same. This one has cranberries, so uh, don't ask. Not really what you classically put in a burrito. And this is the aubergine, and then we have <clears throat> two tortillas. Is that what they're called? Wraps here. A vegan pasty for Fian. Just gonna put these together now. I put in way too much chili, so I'm hoping that I don't like die as I'm eating them. But they smell really good, so uh, fingers crossed they taste as good. recipe for this vlog is one of the easiest ones out there um, especially if you're vegan it is basically a godsend if you have leftovers in the house um, anything veggie basically can go in it and that is of course stir fry I make mine with a mix of veg it varies every time it tends to include cabbage and peppers and then kind of whatever else I have and then I usually put in tofu Ooh, can you see that? Whichever one's cheapest in the shops at the time, basically. And that's just to add a little bit of protein. And then I have it with or without noodles, depending on how I'm feeling. Today I'm gonna make it without noodles, but of course, if you wanna add noodles, please do. Just cook them according to the packet instructions, I guess. So I'm gonna get cooking now. It is so easy. I don't even think that you guys need a video to show how this is done, but I'm gonna do it anyway in case you're new to um, stir fries. I haven't really cooked one before. And if you need any explanations, just ask down below and I will um, hopefully be able to answer any of your questions. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is um, empty out the water from the tofu and then press it between a couple of paper towels just to make sure that it is not soggy and wet. Just empty out in the sink and then just wrap it in paper towels. I'm using 
using um, sunflower oil for this, but if you have any sesame oil, that tastes even better. It just adds a little bit of extra flavor, but I've run out because I use it all the time. simmering away really nicely that can kind of simmer forever if you need it to obviously put it on a lower heat if it starts to brown but i'm just going to leave that all softening now while i deal with the paper so the great thing about tofu is that it adopts the flavor of whatever you're cooking in it it in um so if you want the tofu to have tofu to have more flavor you can marinate it got well, some really good examples the uh, sesame oil and soy sauce or miso or if you're making kind of something of a different cuisine um hot chili sauce sweet chili sauce they're all really great things to marinate it in um for this quick meal i tend not to do that um because i'm lazy and i like food like this but yeah that's a really good option if, if you um want it to have a little bit more flavor because i know that's a lot of people's complaints with tofu that it doesn't taste of anything but it does if you put the flavor in there so um i'm just gonna go cook that over there next to the other rest of the stir fry i'm gonna start adding the other veg into that stir fry now is almost done just going to cook it for a little bit longer to make sure that the kale uh, reduces as um, it does after a while and um, i'm going to put the mushrooms in in a minute they tend to go in last because if you leave them in for too long they do go slimy and that's another issue that people have is slimy mushrooms so i'm going to put them in in a sec just so that they can cook very lightly and then everything will be finished last thing I'm going to add to both the stir fry and also the tofu is soy sauce um, just as a little bit right before we take them off the heat. And there you have it. Probably one of the simplest meals you could possibly make and um, one of the tastiest you could eat. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and that maybe you can give some of these a go at home. They are really easy recipes. That's why I do them. I know I really enjoy cooking, but I don't always have time to do it. So recipes like these basically make up the bulk of my food for the week. And as you can see, I cook for about three or four people every time I cook and then tend to uh, put that in the fridge and leave it until next time for when I cannot be bothered to cook. So if you did enjoy this, please do give it a big fat thumbs up and click the subscribe button and hopefully I will see you next time. Goodbye!